John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. John Anik and Kenny Florian. I fucking love them. I can't get enough of them. Let's hear that boss tonight. Big jab there from Duffy and Frank Mir is hurt now. Oh! Down goes Duffy on oh, court. Frank Mir does it again. Rock'em, sock'em, robots here. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. They're a couple of absolutely self-involved bullshit artists. Here are your hosts, John Anik and Kenny Florian. Oh, is it good to be with you? Is it good to be with you? Third week on YouTube on the new channel. Might be the last. These video delays. Radio guy ain't got time for it. Monday, September 30th, 2019. Episode 219 of the Anakin Florian podcast. A lot of different ways we could lead the show today. Off the air, I said I kind of want to lead with, with May Rocky BJJ because Ken Flo's Jiu-Jitsu school, like standing room only. Like you better get in <laughs> now, right? Kids prices going up. MayRockyBJJ.com. Thank you, man. No, it, it has been blown up. Thankfully, uh, you know, the, the community has has really been responding very well. Um, and we've built a great community within uh, Meraki Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So uh, been really happy, man. Just a bunch of good guys training hard. And yeah, Matt, Matt's base is running out, dude. The kids, the kids' prices are not going up. We're just kidding. We yeah. understand in Los yeah. Angeles. Kids are still uh, welcome. Yeah, Everything's expensive. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, I want to lead with Jared Cannonier, but I at least want to mention this rematch between Yair Rodriguez and Jeremy Stevens that has now been put back on the book. So from Mexico City now to Boston, Massachusetts, and what a backdrop it's going to be, right? Like you, a week ago on this very podcast, sort of outlined some of the challenges with making a rematch in modern day MMA, given the UFC landscape. And lo and behold, they make it, they make it quickly so that these guys can sort of piggyback on the training camp they just had. Uh, and not to mention just all of the fire and the heat that is now all over this new co-main event in, in, in of all places, Titletown, Massachusetts. Uh, without a doubt, this is a difficult thing to do. We were talking about that. For the UFC, they have such an insane schedule. And as far as getting things approved by the various commissions and fitting it on cards and TV schedules, it's a very difficult thing to do. And the fact that they were able to uh, turn around and get this match made is perfect. But I, I think also a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, Magomed Sharipov yes. uh, and, and the Cater fight was called off uh, due to injury. And obviously they had a slot available. It was just perfect uh, for Stevens and Rodriguez to slide in there. It's a fantastic fight that needs to be made Um I thought it was going to be a classic. Of course, uh, the eye, po eye poke stopped all of that. Uh, but we get it in our hometown, man. That should be fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And we also talked about the difference of three rounds versus five last week. And I think if there was ever a case for a five-round co-main event, uh, I don't know if the fighters yeah. would even sign up for it because it is obviously a decidedly different challenge. But uh, I don't know. I think you got a strong case for this co-main event being five rounds coming up October 18th in Boston, but that's just me. Not like I want to call more rounds necessarily on a 13th right. fight night, but uh, <laughs> I think it calls for it. So a lot to get to today. And uh, as I mentioned, a couple technical hiccups. So we're starting 10 minutes late. So we don't want to keep Ian Parker waiting. So we're not going to get to the picks for UFC 243 just yet. But joining us to help break down this Cannoneer Hermanson main event and everything else uh, is the great Ian Parker. Parker, you got to love top billing today. I mean, long go, 18 minutes at least behind you. Uh, how you feeling this morning? I'm feeling good, and I'm going to take up every damn second of that 18 minutes to make Ray uh -huh. wait, maybe even a minute longer just to get him upset. I'm thinking about walking over to his gym right now and surprising him. Right, so you are on location in New York. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. Uh, La Charatova. Yeah, because see, Ian Parker and myself, were, were you bar mitzvah, by the way? I, I was, I was. See, see, both of us, I had a B'nai mitzvah because I'm a twin, right? I know this is what you signed up for, by the way, on the MMA podcast today. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two, two of the three people here, I mean, kemflo has got a little Jew in there, but Ian and, Ian <laughs> and me are like... I've been to enough bar mitzvahs, I'm almost, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. it's almost the same. We, right, should throw Kenny, we should throw Kenny a bar mitzvah one time on the podcast and make him do a little Haftorah act. <laughs> <laughs> you just and uh, you just gave me his punishment. If he loses the main event challenge, he's going yamaka. Holy shit! And then <laughs> Hollis, 
Yeah, we'll do something. We're just something Jew related, but uh, oh, I love yeah, it. but a lot, a lot of a uh, lot of New Year wishes to uh, all of the fellow Jews out there. Uh, all right, so yes. Jared Cannonier, right? We talked about this from a Jack Hermanson standpoint. And by the way, if you don't know the result, uh, it's Cannonier by TKO, twenty-seven seconds into round two, uh, plus two forty-five, I believe, on the betting line. Uh, a lot of value on him by knockout in that plus two eighty range. Uh, our guys, incidentally, were on the Hermanson side, uh, but Ken Flo, we'll start with you. Uh, uh, big opportunity for Jared Cannonier. Hermanson didn't care who he was fighting, just wanted this main event slot, and, and thereby goes his middleweight momentum. Huge win for the MMA Labs, Jared Cannonier. A, a different Jack Hermanson, and we've talked about uh, fighting in your home country or your hometown being both an advantage and it could be a disadvantage. For me, it seemed like Hermanson got a little bit too emotional, was in too much of a rush to get things done against Cannonier. Um, and seemed to lose confidence. Um, I think the other big difference was the fact that Cannoneer made the proper adjustments during that fight. And, and that's the thing. You're either making the right adjustments or you're not and you're losing the fight. Cannoneer was able to make the proper adjustments, find his range, caught him with a beautiful short uppercut that just changed the whole fight. And if Jared Cannoneer gets on top of you and you're already injured or, or hurt, I should say, uh, he's going to take you out. It, it's that simple. This guy has so much power. He has so much confidence right now. Um, and, and I think we're seeing some excellent striking because of his ability to keep this fight on the feet, stop the wrestling takedown. If he right. does get taken down, he's staying calm and composed, able to get back to his feet, and then do what he does best. Uh, it was a tremendous performance for Ken Neer, who had to travel all the way uh, to Denmark uh, against Hermanson, who's been on fire as of late. Uh, what a win, man. And again, when you compete against someone, I've said this for a long time, you have the ability to steal everything that they've earned. Hermanson was being talked about as the guy who could fight for that 185-pound yeah. title next, uh, you know, and Cannoneer went in there and stole it. Yeah, Ian Parker, uh, Jared Cannoneer from heavyweight to light heavyweight, now bona fide middleweight contender. Your thoughts on on Cannoneer's performance here in a huge spot and, and ultimately his middleweight ceiling, which uh, might be higher than some people think. You know, Kenny kind of said it best. And remember when we were talking about this, I kind of said I didn't really understand Jack Hermanson's real incentive outside of fighting at home. Sometimes you got to think about the bigger picture. And when mm -hmm. it comes to the MMA world, you know, I posted this on Twitter, the sport is, is so cruel. You know, Jack goes in there, takes everything from Jacare that everyone thought was going to be a laugh for Jacare. Yeah. Then Jack, like you said, he's now the next fresh blood in line, right? I thought that after this fight, they were going to line up a fight with him and Costa, you know, and not make people wait because you never know with Whitaker if he's actually going to make it to the fight or not. And you got Jack Tanya that is quietly flying under the radar. Not many have really picked him. I know we're going to hear some cappers saying they knew the whole time that he was going to win, blah, 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 <laughs> bullshit, bullshit. And not only did he go in there, you know, Jack got the fight to the ground and pretty smoothly got the back. Kenya didn't even look phased. He was like, all right, whatever. Right. You know, I'm not going to get subbed. I thought right there, all yeah. right, Jack's going to get it going. But when they got back up, you just saw that look on Jack's face. You know, no, he wasn't throwing those inside leg kicks. He felt the strength. And then Kenya capitalized on huge opportunity because now I'm hoping they have him fight Paul Costa, you know, and to have a number one contender shot. Um, for the winner of Adesanya and Whitaker. And good for Jared Kenyon for really I mean, going into someone's backyard and, like you said, taking away everything they earned. That's exactly what he did. And what an amazing story. 36 years old, I believe. Three kids, right? Got to root for the father of three. A lot of bills to pay, got the $50,000 bonus. By the way, if you don't know the backstory on Jared Cannonier, former systems specialist for, for the airlines in Alaska, moved the family to Arizona within the last two or two and a half years, and certainly reaping the rewards, right? We've seen him systematically drop down to 185 pounds. And uh, congratulations to, to Jared Cannonier. Uh Ian, before we move on, any other highlights for you on this Copenhagen show? Big win, obviously, for Gilbert Durinho Burns uh, against Gunnar Nelson, as you and, and Ken Flo both forecasted. Anything uh, jump off the card for you in Denmark over the weekend? Well, Gilbert Burns was definitely one of them. <laughs> I think a win over Gunnar Nelson in the new division really kind of showed, all right, he's, he's here to stay. He's not making the same mistakes he made, you know, in the lower weight class where he kind of got away from his jiu-jitsu. And really handling Gunnar Nelson even on the ground is impressive, regardless of what the acolytes are that he's achieved in his own way. Um, I think Nicholas Dalby, you know, coming back to the UFC, getting a win over, uh, I'll, I'll call it a controversial win, 
over Tabata Oliveira. That ref stand up a few times, though very questionable. And even Lena Landsberg beating uh, Macy um, Chazon was, Chazon, you know, yeah. she was the biggest under. Uh, sorry, she was the biggest underdog on the card. So you got to give her credit. You know, back to back wins as a big underdog says a lot. You know, not that I'm saying yeah. she's the next big star, but she was a yeah. huge underdog in that fight and she dominated. All right, maybe some more coming up on Copenhagen in a little bit uh, with Ray Longo, but we got to make some picks. It is a pay-per-view fight week, and for a lot of people, this is the single most anticipated UFC championship fight, at least that is on the books thus far in 2019. Let's get to the main event challenge. It's the main event challenge. And it. The time is most definitely now. It's glory. I finished fights. I'm going to do everything possible to win. The main event challenge. The John Anik and Kenny Florian Podcast. Gilbert Durino Burns listening to the Anakin Florian Podcast is like, really? Like, is that all the love you're going to give me for this four-fight <laughs> winning streak? I promise you we haven't uttered the words Gilbert Burns the last time over the course of episode 219. Uh, but today's main event challenge brought to you by MyBookie.ag. If you found 100 bucks on the street, would you pick it up or would you keep walking? Might look around, but you'd probably take the money. So why do you keep picking winners and not betting on them? Kind of the same thing, a little bit. That's why I go to MyBookie.ag. It is fast, it is easy, and they pay when you win. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important as who you are betting on. And candidly, I would not be endorsing MyBookie if I didn't believe they were the best. I gamble there every day. And now is a good time to make your first deposit. The football season well underway. A lot of big MMA shows on tap in the next few weeks. You can also bet on these football games live, by the way. After kickoff, maybe by the second half, looks like your bet is going to dump. You can hedge, maybe take the other side. Now, again, we talk about Ken Flo's bank. Roll, right, and if you if you don't have a, a bankroll like Ken Flo's or Ian Parker's, I guess might be a better example. Uh, then you know what? Maybe you parlay, right? No straight wagers. You go the parlay route. You know, bet a little, win a lot. You win, you multiply your winnings. Regardless of how you choose, though, to bet and attack the board, there is no better time than the start of the NFL season to get in the game. Special offer right now for our Anakin Florian podcast listeners. Join now. My bookie will double your first deposit. Use the promo code Anik Florian to activate the offer. That's promo code Anik Florian. Our last names, one word, Anik Florian. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win. You get paid. All right, Team Florian led Team Anik 115-114 going into UFC Copenhagen. And by virtue of the Flo's underdog pick on Iwan Kute Laba, Ken Flo takes the week 5-4. Overall lead is 2, 120-118. We come up on UFC 2-4-3. And unless the fight card changes due to Holly Holmes' recent withdrawal, this fight next here will be the pay-per-view opener. 170 pounds, Diego Lima, minus 190, the favorite, going for a third straight win here against the plus 155 underdog, Luke Jumo. Ian Parker, talk to me here. Welterweights, Luke Jumo, Diego Lima, who do you like? I like Diego Lima here. You know, I liked him in his last um, against Court McGee. I just feel like right now is the time for Diego. I think he's put everything together. You know, there was a lot of hype on him on the show, especially getting a chance the second time around. And I think he is someone that it's really, even though, you know, he won his last fight, when I say it's now or never, I mean career-wise. And this fight really favors him. I don't think Luke has the overall strength. I think there's a lot for him to take. I think it's, what, his second UFC fight, if I'm correct. Um, I just think Diego, you know, is, is kind of finding himself. He's finding his range. He's not rushing in. He's not blowing the gas tank too early. And he's really putting it together. I, I just, I like the way his IQ has really risen. Over the last few fights, I think the maturation is really there, and I'm going to go with Diego Lima with this one. I'm surprised the odds are actually this low, so I'm going to hop on that one pretty quickly. Ken Flo, couple straight, as we mentioned, for Diego Lima. Knocked out Chad LaPreeze, outpointed Court McGee. Jumo, first UFC win came in Perth. That was all the way back in February 2018. He pulled out of a fight with Jeff Neal last December. Now he ends this near 20-month layoff in Melbourne against Diego Lima. Flo, what do you think, Diego Lima or Luke Jumo for you? You know, I, I agree with Ian here. Uh, I'm going to be much shorter with it. But, yeah, I think Diego Lima is developing into a very good mixed martial arts fighter. I, I think he's learning from past mistakes. Um, and he's just way more comfortable in the octagon now. I, I see him getting the win here over Luke. Another father of three, at least, right? I know for a fact he's got three kids, at least. So good for Diego Lima sort of right in the ship after six wins on the Ultimate Fighter spanning two seasons. Six exhibition wins on Tough that don't show up on his pro record. All right, heavyweight, Ty Tuivasa. 
the prohibitive minus 350 favorite here against Sergei Spivak. Spivak plus 275. So Tui Vasa, Ian, he was 8-0. No, now he's 8-2. and two. The most recent loss, unanimous decision to Bwagwe Ivanov, UFC 238 back in June. You think Tui Vasa bounces back here or what? I think he has to. Um, you know, again, in the heavyweight division, you know, you don't want to fall from grace too hard. And I think a guy in Spivak, we don't really know much. You know, the fight against Will Harris, I did really quickly. But what did it show us? It showed that a guy he's got, doesn't have a great chin, and if he gets bum-rushed you know, and gets lit up accommodations, he, you know, it's tough. I think Tui Vasa has, all, has the skill set and the tools to really bring the fight. I just think someone in him, because at the time when he was you know, getting that little bit of a push, the heavyweight division was lacking prospects. There were a lot of injuries, so he got moved up the ladder pretty quick. And you know, Kenny mentioned this last time that a lot of these prospects sometimes get rushed too quick, and those losses just feel so much worse. I think for this fight, Tui Vasa, this should be a win for him. Get him back. Get him, uh, get him a W. Get him back in the column. He's a fan favorite. Let's watch him do a shoey. I'm going to take Ty Tui Vasa with this one. <laughs> the shoey Vasa. I did not come up with that. Shoey Vasa. Call. There we go. The shoey Vasa. Uh, on the other side, Sergey Spivak can flow 9-0 before he ran into Walt Harris in his UFC debut. That was back in May. Young guy, 24 years old. Does give up some size in this heavyweight division. Pretty good submission game. Your thoughts on Spivak against the Shui Vasa, Tai Tui Vasa? Yeah, you know, I think for Spivak, uh, I, I still think he's uh, adjusting his style to the octagon. I, I think that speed-wise, um, he'll be at a disadvantage here against Tui Vasa. Um, I, I think Tai sometimes, though, gets caught up in showing um, too much bravado and, and not enough um, strategy. Um, gets caught into throwing the same combinations over and over again. You know, he needs to be able to read the fight a little bit better. I do think that he should get the win and should get the win uh, by knockout here over Spivak. But, um, you know, I think it's a good fight, like Ian said, for him to come back, um, get some momentum going in this heavyweight division and and hopefully learn from from past mistakes. If Yeah, if Tui Vasa is developing the way people think he can, uh, this, this, there's no reason he shouldn't present the best version to date. A lot of learning lessons in both of those recent losses for him. All right, co-main event in the lightweight division. Dan Hooker, this line has moved a little bit. So Dan Hooker minus 150 now, about 20 cents since last night, if you care. Raging ally Quinta from even money to plus 120. We will need the round and the method of victory here. Ken Flo is going to lead the co-main event. A little background before we get there. Aya Quinta, still a contender, right? He's still number six in the world. He was outclassed by Donald Cowboy Cerrone in their main event back in May. Hooker on the other side. The Barboza fight doesn't seem that long ago. Um, and he put that in the rearview mirror, obviously, by knocking out James Vick in July. So two guys certainly still hungry with title aspirations. Hooker's won five of six. Ken Flo, close fight on paper. Dan Hooker, raging ally Quinta. I'm telling Longo, if you're picking Hooker, uh, who do you like? <laughs> Pressure's on. Uh, this is not an easy fight to pick. Um, I, I think Dan Hooker matches up quite well against ally, ally Quinta. I think that uh, where Al needs to be especially careful is in the clinch. Um, Hooker has uh, some amazing uh, knees from that tie clinch. Um, has excellent kicks uh, at long range as well. So for Al, he needs to get on the inside, but do it without getting into that tie clinch of Dan Hooker. And Hooker's going to be a lot taller than him, uh, which could really be a big disadvantage in that clinch. So for Iaquinta, if he's in the clinch, he should be looking for takedowns, uh, where I think Al will have the advantage on the ground against Hooker. I think Hooker probably has better submissions, but Iaquinta might have better position on the mat. Um, it, it This is a tricky one. I think Al... Definitely has heavier hands. Um, I am going to go with Ally Aquinta. If he's able to pressure Dan repeatedly, put that pressure on him, land some big shots early, take control of the fight early, I think Al can win this fight. I'm going to go with Ally Aquinta. Uh, By decision. Decision. I'm going oh, for man. it. <laughs> Parker mocking Kenny Florian. You don't even know yeah, what you I got. I love Kenny. Parker. I love yeah. Kenny. Careful. He's, he's in behind. Sick shape right now. He's, he he's behind. You. He's got to do what he's got to do. You know, he's got, he yeah. has some work to do. I, I'm, the, I'm the champ. I'm the champ. I got the belt. <laughs> you do. You do. Yeah. Uh, you got yeah. <laughs> Dan Hooker is number 15 in the world at present. Ally Quinta number six. So a lot to lose here if you're Al. A lot to gain if you're Hooker. Uh, who, by the way, knocked out Gilbert Dorino Burns last July. Of course, Gilbert Burns has gone 4-0 since. 
Uh, Parker, we know you love fading Ray Longo's guys. Who do you have in the co-main event? Well, first off, I just love how Gilbert writes into the show that we don't give him enough love. And the first thing you say since that is how he got knocked out by Dan Hooker. Yeah. Gilbert, nice, John. that was not me. That was John. Just want yeah. to throw that out yeah. there. That's my guy, <laughs> Dorino. There you go. First off, yeah. He's, and I just heard he just uh, he volunteered to go up the middleweight to take on Brendan Allen because Eric Spicely's right. out. So, right. Burns, nice. you're, you're a sicko, man. You're the man. Anyway. This fight's interesting. Um, you know, playing bias to the side, Kenny kind of hit it on the head. I think what we saw, I think this is going to be a similar fight um, as long as Al can make the adjustments against someone like Cowboy Cerrone. And I don't mean in regards to the legendary icon. I just, I'm talking about the, the range, you know, the kicks, all that stuff. It, it kind of showed that if Al wasn't able to get to the inside against a rangier guy, it made his night really tough. He couldn't implement what he usually does. I think people underestimate because they haven't seen it as much. Al is a very high-level wrestler, and he's actually got great submissions. I actually got better submissions than Dan Hooker, uh, so I'll go against Kenny on that point. But, you know, in regards to the heavier, hand, you know, the heavier hands, both guys have the knockout power. It's intriguing. I, I think it's more of a grappler striking battle. I think Al's going to have to implement the wrestling. If he brings his fight to the ground, I don't think he'll have any trouble winning. Um, you know, to Kenny's point, he gets stuck in the clinch. He's going to be in for a long night. Ah, man, it's, it's a tough pick. I'm trying to not be biased here. I just haven't seen – we haven't seen too many guys, you know, try to take Hooker down. And we talked about the Barboza fight with the striking game. I'm going to go Al by decision also. I just think this fight, he has to win this fight. It's not too often Al loses two in a row if you, if you go back and look at his record. And I think, he, I think he gets the fight to the ground and makes it his world. So I'm going Al by decision. All right, Ally Quinta can be found in the plus 120 range here as we sit here uh, early Monday afternoon on the east coast of the United States of America. All right, main event, middleweight championship unification bout. Robert Whitaker, minus 115. Israel Adesanya, minus 115. Of course, Ian, we will need the round, the method of victory. Your thoughts first on this incredible, incredible matchup and ultimately who wins it? Yeah, I just hope the MMA gods allow this to still happen. There's too much time for things to go on. Um, oh, come on. You know, like, I'm just saying it scares me. That when, when Whitaker's there, we're in a different country. It always scares me, unfortunately. But I think we'll be all right. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of the more anticipated fights. I think because, you know, to see if Adesanya is going to really keep his momentum. And I think people, because Whitaker, unfortunately, has been inactive, forget what he's done since not having a great run at 170. You know, Whitaker and those battles with Romero were insane. You know, were really were insane. And it sh- he, he took the punishment, he gave it back, he showed his cardio. You know, the Adesanya fight against Gaslam was also kind of crazy. Um, this is such a hard fight to pick, especially picking the method. I'm trying to not rant. Um, you know, I don't know if Adesanya has fought anyone like Whitaker in regards to the striking so far in his career. I don't think he's fought anyone at this level. And that's nothing against Gaslam, just. People really undervalue Robert Whitaker. So based on that and based on the experience and the level, I'm going to go, oh, man, I'm going to go Rob, I'm gonna go Whitaker. I'll go by decision. Um, you know, I think Adesanya is an exciting fighter. I just think that he has not fought anyone like Whitaker. Whitaker will not get tired. He's got the power. Let's go Bobby. We're going to go Robert Whitaker. All right, the Reaper, Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker, the pick to click for Ian Parker, Ken Flo on the other side, Adesanya, remarkably, less than 20 months on this UFC roster, 17-0 and overall, 6-0 and in the UFC. He has fought four times since we last saw Whitaker, uh, but he has had nearly six months since that fight of the year against Kelvin Gastelum. A lot of people have said and wondered aloud how this would go if he had more time, but it's not like he had four months, right? Six is better than four. Uh, and certainly Whitaker, however long ago they were, had the two wars with Yoel Romero. Uh, this is going to be insane. If it's 25 minutes, um, it's going to be an absolute war, just like that Gastelum Adesanya fight was. Ken Flo, dying to know who you like in this main event. Ian Parker goes Whitaker. Which way are you going, kid? Uh, let me say this right off the bat. I, I don't be surprised if, if Whitaker tries to take down Adesanya in this fight. Uh, I just have a feeling that he's going to be mixing in a lot of takedowns to try to surprise Adesanya. Um, Whitaker has very underrated wrestling. We saw the defensive aspects of it uh, in previous fights against Yo Romero and other guys who have tried to take him down. I think he could wrestle um, and has some good offense with that wrestling as well. So um, 
I do think that Adesanya is the superior striker overall. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think Whitaker is extremely fast. He's also very powerful as well, especially when he comes behind that karate-style blitz. But Adesanya's footwork, I think, is going to be too crafty. I think his ability to cut angles uh, and counter um, his range is always going to be a problem against anyone in that division. Um, he may not have the most amount of power, but he does find a way uh, to get people to run into his shots, uh, be it uh, punches, elbows, knees, or kicks. Um, I, I think he's going to have to have a phenomenal performance but I think Adesanya will rise to the occasion and get the win here. Uh, fourth round TKO for Mr. Israel Adesanya, and he becomes the middleweight champion and becomes an even bigger superstar in the process. Oh, my gosh, right? He already moves that celebrity needle if he becomes the undisputed champion and sort of completes this crazy two-year run in the UFC with a Robert Whitaker on the end of it. I mean, can you imagine, right? I mean, this dude has passed every test. Uh, with every flying color that you could possibly want, dating to, you know, Wilkinson and his UFC debut, in which he, you know, stuffed 13 takedowns. The guy tried to take him down 20 times. All right, Ian Parker, uh, I'm glad you and Flo are on different sides. I know you're upset that TJ did not put you on video today. We will hopefully not just hear you, but uh, see you next Monday on the <laughs> other side. Are we going with the Kenny Florian pajama dress code next time? I just want to make sure uh, I'm prepared. What do you think I'm wearing? I don't look any better. No, we. Look I got better. my T-shirt on, dog. Yeah, at least you got a. John's at a desk. Kenny's sitting in bed. I'm just going to assume, uh, based on the last few weeks, that's what we're going with here. I'm on a nice couch. All right, I'm you made you made long go wait five minutes, Ian. We love you. We'll talk to you next week, kid. <laughs> you got it, guys. Be good. <laughs> All right, so one pick for Whitaker, one pick for Adesanya, minus 115 on both sides. We will see uh, where that betting line ends up uh, as we get closer to fight week next Saturday, Sunday, uh, in the land down under. Let's get to Ray Longo. It's now time for the Ray Longo Minute. I want you to punch a hole in this fucking chest. That's what I want. The Ray Longo Minute. Starring Ray Longo. The John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. And Kenny, Ray wants you to know he made a concerted effort to be on the podcast today. He's on his way to the airport right now and, and just wanted to make sure to give us, you know, five to seven minutes here during fight week. Well, so. here's the thing. He, he He's not on time. We, 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 we scheduled him for earlier and now he's becoming this diva. I got to go to the airport. I mean, come on, Ray. <laughs> come on, Kenny. I'm just waiting for the drop. I was waiting for the drop for Jeez. 20 minutes yeah. now. Right. I know. Uh, well, we apologize. Hey, we were trying to lead the show with you today, right? The program director said it's Ally Quinta's fight week. The dude's on his way to Australia. You got to lead the show with Longo. We try to do that, and you're bumping things back 30 he, He's minutes. out of the spot, John. That's it. I'm making an executive decision. No more, no more leading with Longo. We can't trust him anymore. <laughs> Man, yeah. I, love, I love it. I'm getting attacked right off the bat. I, this, is, this feels like home. This is home to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, he does bring up a good point. You throw Longo in that A block, you just got to be right. careful, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, so are you... I'm, are you I'm, only, I'm uh, only doing the A block when I get my picture back on the podcast. Where's my YouTube? Right, right. Where's my... Where's yeah. my whatever, whatever they call it. I don't even know. Next week is the target date to have you uh, on video, my friend. Back on video, Wait. I should say. You can certainly look at all of our past episodes on Fox Sports on video on their YouTube page if you like. But our YouTube page was started in 2019. Just a little slow, you know. It's like a, the little engine that could, you know. It just took me four and a half years to realize that show should probably have a YouTube page. And, you know, here we are. Here we go. All right. So, wait, so first are, off, you, John, are you going to Australia? I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm not leaving today. I'm leaving tomorrow night. I will oh, be wow. emceeing the open workout. So I will see you thursday i gotta lose like seven pounds between now and then so oh wow so the open workouts are there. okay cool very good thank you and you gotta get so, down uh, seven all right I got yeah to i gotta get down seven yeah 162 right now 55 is my broadcasting weight so uh all right so are you are you on your way to the airport right now no i'm sitting in the airport right now i'm here okay so you're already through you're ready to go are you flying by yourself no, I, i'm flying with uh, mr matt Sarah. Oh, my God. Don't put him on the phone. Do not. <laughs> not put him I don't even phone. know where he is right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'm a, you know what before. I'm actually flying out of gate. I'm flying out of gate 34, and I'm sitting in gate 32 just so I don't see him on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get get a lot of Matt Sarah time this week. A little separation right now. I don't uh, think it's going to yeah, hurt anybody. Exactly. So I'm, I'm uh, sure I'm sitting next in... to him on the flight, so that's enough for me. Oh, look at that. Lucky person who shares the row with you two. No, you guys are up front. You got your probably your lay flats and everything else, you know. Should, so should be, uh, should, should be an interesting trip. So, uh, so do you have somebody in your life who's like, hey, did, did did you make sure you packed everything? Like, what did you forget to bring? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Of course, we all have, we all have somebody like that in our lives. I'm assuming. <laughs> My wife just left me and. Maybe next week I'll share what we talked about for 30 minutes driving to the <laughs> uh, We'll save that for next week. So uh, all, I, all I know we, is when I got out of the car, I asked the, the guy uh, directing traffic if he had a gun so I could shoot myself <laughs> in the head. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you I get the picture? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, funny. So, uh, so we just did our picks. Uh, Kenny and Ian Parker both picked Ally Quinta. Uh, I think both by decision, if I am not mistaken. Yes. Uh, so Al, he's a slight underdog right now. Um, how are you feeling? How is Al? Has he already arrived safely? What can you tell us? Al's uh, definitely, he's been there for about a week, I think, already, and he feels great. Uh, he's been sending me his workouts. He looks good. Uh, and that's about it. I'll see him when I get, you know, when I get there. But uh, so far, so good. Wait, you, you said Al was the underdog? He is a very slight underdog. It was even money last night. Now he is plus 120. Those lines are, uh, well, you can go to oddshark.com and look at sort of a comprehensive look. Um, Mybookie.ag, where I play, has him plus 120 right now. Wow. That's good. That's a good bet. <laughs> yeah, right. So right. Do, you, do you have a guy to put a bet in if you need to? <laughs> I think I might know a couple of those guys, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a couple in Long Island. I don't know. Maybe yeah, one or two. A, there's a couple of guys floating around that'll take the money, yeah. <laughs> Ray. You, know uh, you ever hear of Joe you ever hear of Joe Moderat? I, I yes, I have. Of course. Okay. Very <laughs> good. We're on the same page, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh Ray, listen, man, is there a fight out there where, that you feel Al's able to kind of replicate against someone like a, a Dan Hooker based on Hooker's, you know, previous fights? Is there a uh, blueprint out there? I, I mean, I think, you know, in the Cerrone fight, I think uh, he, he knows he, he, he would have liked to have done some other things. And I think the, uh, you know, the height gave him a little problem. So I think that was a good gauge as to, you know, what we did in this, this training camp of bringing in really tall guys because Hooker's tall and, uh, you know, we had South Coors, we had regular guys because I think he goes back and forth. Yes. But, uh, you know, I think that's the, uh, is just getting it Al inside where he could do his damage and uh, just mixing it up. And I don't think he mixed it up enough with Cerrone. And, uh, you know, I think that was, that was one of the issues. Has there been any conversations with Al about dealing with, um, you know, the, the home crowd being in, in Hooker's favor? Uh... No, no, not really. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's one of those guys, uh, Kenny, like, you know what you're getting out of that guy. No matter where it is, when it is, Al's coming to fight. He's very technical. Uh, he's got, I think he's got a great fight IQ, and uh, I, I don't believe the crowd will be, I think the crowd will work in his favor. I right. think he relishes that. You know, he, he did great with uh, Ross Pearson last time we were here, and... Uh, uh, he loves Australia, and I, I think uh, I, I know the crowd will probably be behind Tucker, but I think he's going to have his fans here. Yeah, I'd imagine that was part of the appeal for Al to co-headline a stadium show in Australia, right? Because on paper, he's the one who's putting his number six ranking on the line against a guy who is number 15 in the world. I'd imagine sort of the whole backdrop of this show had some appeal and the slot for Al, yeah? Yeah, I think so. You know, that's Al, man. He just, uh, you know, he hopped on a plane going to the guy's, basically his backyard, and, you know, he just wants to fight, really. 
Hey, so last thing before we let you go, and we appreciate you joining us live from the airport, Ray Longo Minute here on the Anakin Florin Podcast. Whitaker Adesanya. Normally, I know your, your focus always is going to be on your athletes, and you're not worried about where you're going to be sitting for this main event. But you're going to be in Australia. You're going to be in the building for a fight that is as anticipated for fans as any this year. Uh, what's your uh, level of enthusiasm for this main event, and who do you think wins between Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya? Oh, man, my level of enthusiasm is high. This is a great fight, great matchup. Two pretty, I think, equally skilled guys. Uh, I think Whitaker gets the job done. I think uh, his pacing and, you know, he, his angles, I think he's going to learn from the Gastelum fight. I think Gastelum had that fight won until he went for the takedown when he had him hurt. And, you know, I think he's, I think his movement and his uh, pacing will give him a slight edge. But, you know, the other guy is a sharpshooter. And he could catch you, but I, I'm going with uh, Whitaker on this one. All right, man. Well, uh, I'll be at the lowly host hotel. Enjoy the Airbnb. I wish you and Matt Sarah <laughs> safe travels. I think he. Uh, what else? I say? What are you? Are you, not, are you at the host hotel? I am at the host hotel where the athletes are staying. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what's the name? Can you say the name over the phone? Does that matter or no? I, I would. I mean, they font it on no, UFC text, Embedded. Text, text, but me, text me that. Cause I don't know the name of the, the hotel. We're out of the Airbnb, John. He didn't like it. <laughs> so. Oh, the realtor. The part-time realtor raging out I like think, Quinton did not like the uh, Airbnb. He, he texted me. He goes, you're, he goes, you're not going to like it. I'm getting your hotel room, and I'm getting myself one. Too. I think that wow. Was, that was kind of the gist of the text, So. I never right. even got where, where, where the host was, so if you could text me, that would be great. Just so I that. will. Finally... Finally, some breaking news from Ray Longo here during Fight Week. The raging out <laughs> yeah. is his humble abode did not work out. See, that's the thing. Like, I take everything back to Team Florian, right, as the captain of Team Florian. So I'm thinking of Ken Flo arriving in Australia, trying to cut down to 155 pounds. That Airbnb ain't working out. And Ken Flo's fucking livid right now on a Monday during Fight Week, you know? <laughs> that is, that now, is breaking think, news. The, I, the Airbnb is out. And, man, that thing looked phenomenal on paper i don't know what <laughs> right, happened right. you know i, 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 I really think i think there's <laughs> beer bottles i think there's beer bottles uh and and a bunch of people passed out on the floor is what i think <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you something that's what i love about al man that guy is just what a true blue loyal guy that text that guy he goes i don't think you're gonna like it and he made the, <laughs> the, the executive decision and he yeah. says, I'm putting you in a hotel room. I love the guy, man. I wish him That's the best. Awesome. I really hope he crushes it this weekend. And he definitely trained right. He got great sparring. So I'm, I'm very excited. I know Aljamain Sterling underwent wrist surgery within the last 72 hours. He's usually a staple of Al's corner. You've talked on this podcast about how valuable he is in the corner. Is Aljo getting on a plane or no? Al, I think Aljo's leave, leaving tomorrow. Yeah, Aljo will oh. be here. Marab's, Marab's already there. We got a couple other guys. Yeah, no, this this is a tight group of guys, man. So yeah. Aljo, he's in a he's in a cast, but uh, yeah, he's 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 going to be hop on a plane and go. So I love these guys. I love stick it, together. man. Aljo, fresh you know, out of surgery, flying to Melbourne, man. I mean that, and that trip's no joke from the East Coast. Good for him. Let me tell you something, man. All for one and one for all. That's it. Yeah, man. Well, you these got a big one guys. in front of you, man. You got a big one in front of you. We wish you all the best with it. Anything else before we let you fly? I'll tell you, shout out to Aljo, man. He bought a Tesla. Has anybody driven one of these things? They're, uh, they're, they're very high tech. Yeah. Let me tell you some, Kenny, the guy, I, I jumped in there yesterday. Look, he goes, put your seatbelt on. I go, no, that's all right. I got <laughs> uh, somebody's, somebody's waiting for me. And so he goes, no, trust me, put your seatbelt on. Dude, that thing <laughs> went from like zero to 100 in about two seconds. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> Those things are I'm unbelievable. I'm telling you, man. I cannot believe it. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, Aljo, stop the freaking car. I got a guy with one arm driving the car at, at 80 right. miles oh. an hour. Well, it's okay because they drive themselves now. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good point. Dang man, Excellent. Wow. Well, hey, but anyway, uh, hats, hats off to Aljo, man. What a great car, and uh, he was so excited about it. And, uh, wish him the best of luck, man. These guys are killing it. He That's deserves awesome. that. He's the number one contender. Hey, maybe if we get that licensing deal for the Anakin Florin podcast, you buy yourself a Tesla, okay? Man, damn, dude. I'll take, uh, I'll take a lollipop at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about oh, a Snickers bar? Let's start there, John. <laughs> How about a, a tough year, bar? Ray. It's been a tough year. See, Matt Sarah's always like, dude, you don't, Anakin Florin, I got to pay you. You know, I got to pay you more. <laughs>
It's been a tough year, all right? It's been a tough year. Tell them. All right, get out of here. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll see you, right, uh, you easy, see halfway I'll across the dude. All right, there he is, Ray Longo. I don't know the name of the host hotel. I don't know where I'm staying. Yeah, you know? it's you, it's uh, tunnel vision, right? Your, what, your social security number, bank account number, anything else, Ray? Anything I else mean, you want, you John, know. to kind of just divulge on this very, very, yeah. very popular podcast? <laughs> yeah, Jeez. this highly listened to podcast. Thanks to Ray Longo. Big fight, man. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised one of you didn't land on Dan Hooker, um, but I know that was objective betting from both of you. So we'll see how it goes uh, for Team Sarah Longo there in the land down under. All right. It is now time for the pick to click. It is brought to you by OddShark.com. OddShark is your source for the latest odds from leading authorities, expert editorial content, and detailed matchup picks. With expert in-depth analysis for each game, their free statistics, numbers, and trends will help you make the sharp picks on game day. Head over to OddShark and start playing like a shark today. OddShark.com. OddShark.com. Don't forget that second S. And now joining us on the guest line, our good friend, one of the lead sports analysts for OddShark.com, Joe Osborne is with us. Joe, good afternoon, sir. How are you, man? I am great. How are you guys doing? We're doing well, man. It's always a whirlwind in this UFC world. You know, the news cycle is such that they always keep us on our toes. Uh, I thought it was interesting that this Yair Rodriguez-Jeremy Stevens fight that headlined UFC Mexico City about a week ago was rebooked so quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if there's precedent in terms of where the betting line will fall, but it closed close to a pick em, Um I'd imagine it'll it'll end up being somewhere in that range when they run it back here in a few weeks. Any insight on that for me, man? I have not seen anything on that yet, guys. But, you know, I, I completely agree that I expect, you know, little to no line movement whatsoever. You know, people would argue that uh, uh, Jeremy might have been at a disadvantage with Yair having a lot more experience training at altitude. And now uh, the fight's in a different location. So maybe a little bit of an edge there for Stevens. Um, I liked Yair in the first fight. I think that Stevens may be a little bit too, pen too dependent on landing that big shot, but uh, I kind of want him to win. I didn't really care for Yair's uh, uh, right. behavior after that fight. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see how that one goes. All right, so we need some winners, Joe. You know, the NFL season yeah. is cruel in some respects and other respects not so much. You know, I'm 12-8 and eight in the Super Contest, but you just feel badly about yourself when you're off a of two- and three-week. So uh, mm -hmm. what's your forecast for, for this week as you look ahead? I know we got a big Monday Night Football game tonight. Uh, what, what are you wetting your beak with here as we're starting a new week? Well, I originally, I liked the Bengals quite a bit at plus four, but now it's down to plus three. So if you're betting that right now, not as much value – um, I would decide with over 45 or 44 and a half in that game. I think, you know, for the Bengals, they played some pretty tough defenses so far this season. Now they're going against the Steelers. This is one of the worst defenses in the league, guys. They're 27th in opponents' yards per play. They can't stop uh, teams on third down. They're getting no pressure on the quarterback. Whereas the Cincinnati defense, they're not any good either. So this might be a pretty good opening for uh, Mason Rudolph to have a breakout performance. Cincinnati, one of the worst teams in the league against the run also. So I like points in that one. But my best bet of the week so far, guys, these line numbers are going to move, as you know, is under 41.5 points for the Bears who are playing the Raiders in London, a game that I'm going to. And sadly, I don't think it's going to be a very good game. Uh Take a look at the Bears, man. This is probably the best defense in the league. Going back to last season, yeah. we've seen the under hit in eight of their last nine games. Average combined score of just 29 points in those games. They haven't allowed more than 15 points in a game this season. And that's against a few offenses. They have a lot more to offer than the Raiders do. So, you know, their defense is a real problem, but their offense is a different type of problem, averaging just 16 and a half po uh, points per game so far this season. Um, and like I said, the game's in London. Take a look at the Raiders. They played in London in each of the past two seasons. They scored a grand total of just 11 points in those games. So I think that number's a little high at 41 and a half. I know you've been on fire with these unders of late. I know you had the under in the Bears-Vikings over the weekend. You gave our listeners a free play on the under Jets-Bears, or excuse me, Jets-Browns on a Monday night or two were built with the NBA and with overs, man. Anytime I don't bet overs, right? I, I, anytime I'm betting a total, I am I am taking the under, and uh, you've certainly been hot with those. So 
In terms of this UFC main event this weekend between Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya, and for those of you who don't know, you know, a lot of good Canadians and MMA fans in that Odd Shark office there north of the border. I know you guys are tapped into the UFC and mixed martial arts and what's going on. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to go to Melbourne. I don't always say that just because it takes me, you know, a couple days to get there. But this fight between Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya, for me, should be appointment viewing for sports fans around the world. How excited are you for the fight? And at minus 115 on both sides, uh, as we sit here early on during fight week, do you, do you have a lean uh, either way for us? Well, John, I'm absolutely pumped for this fight. It's one of the, the best fights you can make in the middle league division and all of the UFC and I think the value is on Whitaker here. Back in April in the line for Open, he opened at minus 150, and I thought that number was right. So some people picking against him will use the fact that he's had a pretty long layoff here, uh, and they'll use the ring rust factor into their handicap, but I don't think he's going to be affected by the layoff. He had a pretty big gap between both Romero fights, and he looked pretty strong in the second one, which, of course, he won. He's an absolute bulldozer. I think he's more uh, more yeah. versatile striker than Calvin Gastelum, who, you know, I think he's underrated Gastelum. But uh, I think he's going to offer Adesanya a lot more issues than Gastelum did. Who in Adesanya, he had some trouble on his feet in the first round. It took him a little bit of time to get his timing right. So that said, just an ordinary money line bet on Whitaker. It seems like a safe bet, but I might consider a little sprinkle on Whitaker to win in the first round. When the odds come out, uh, prop odds odds earn out for that one. So that might be uh, a nice long shot bet to make for that one. But yeah, I like Whitaker on his home turf. Yeah. No, and that's interesting, and I do think a lot of sharps are going to see the value on that side. When I was sort of writing down what I thought the line would be at, I had Whitaker minus 140, so I was a little bit surprised that it was a pick -em. Not that I have a lean one way or the other, of course, calling the fight, but yeah, a lot of good insight there, my man. All right, well, very exciting. You guys are going to London, so you're doing live shows over there in advance of this football game? Is that what's going on? Yeah, we're doing live shows on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on the streets of London. Uh, Guys and Bets is the name of the show we do here Monday through Friday at 12 Eastern. Uh, but we're taking it on the road and doing a couple special shows there. We're going to be all over everything, uh, NFL, college football, Major League Baseball, of course, the UFC card. So uh, we're going to be all over the map. So I invite people to uh, tune in, find us on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. There it is, guys and bets on Twitter. You can find Joe at JTFOZ, uh, part of all that great content you see on the daily oddshark.com. Joe Osborne, great stuff, my man. Appreciate the time as always. We will talk to you uh, in two weeks, if not sooner, man. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Good luck to you and good luck to all the listeners out there. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Joe Osborne with us every couple weeks here on the Anakin Florian podcast. All right, so I got one foot out the door to Melbourne, Ken Flo. You can understand how excited I am for this whitaker Adesanya fight. It's just crazy to think that Adesanya could accomplish all of this in two years, right? Just become, you know, not mixed martial arts royalty yet, but he is a, a superstar on the level of, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I hesitate to put him in a conversation with, like, Nate Diaz yet, but... I don't know. I mean, what do the metrics say about Adesanya and what he's done already and where he could take this thing, you know, if he can actually complete this job and become the undisputed champion here in six days? Well, it's certainly a rise um, speed-wise on the level of Conor McGregor, right? I mean, you look at uh, how busy he's been, um, the kind of competition that he's taken out. Um, uh, the schedule has been ridiculous. He's been very active. And obviously, it's a testament to his work ethic, the kind of... Um, training that he put in before he got into the UFC. I remember talking to uh, Israel about that before he got into the UFC. He was asking me some advice and I said, before you get in the UFC make sure you get as much experience as possible. Try to get your skills to a level where once you're in the UFC, you are ready because so many people get to the UFC way too early. They just want to get to the big organization as quickly as possible without having the skills to be able to get it done against the elite. And I think he did the right thing. He was ready uh, and here he is on, on the cusp of becoming the middleweight champion in this short amount of time. Uh, it's unbelievable. And, and all of his success and all of the hype, I think, is well-deserved at this point. 
So Israel Adesanya, born in Nigeria, represents New Zealand. Robert Whitaker on the other side, born in New Zealand, but moved to Australia at a very young age, represents Australia. So, uh, you know, the Aussies versus the Kiwis, it's just going to be absolute chaos, uh, hopefully in front of the largest crowd in UFC history. Stands to reason that more people will be at UFC 243, Whitaker versus Adesanya, than at any uh, UFC show previously. All right, last thing just because the middleweight championship is being contested this weekend. We talked about Jared Cannonier off the top of the show. He immediately becomes a contender. And then because these guys are fighting this weekend, you can't help but think, you know, how does he match up with these guys? And I think physically there's a lot to like about Cannonier in this 185 pound division. But I can't say after the six minutes or so I saw with Jack Hermanson that I thought this was you know, immediately somebody that was going to challenge the likes of Whitaker and Adesanya, uh, despite the fact that he'll be the naturally bigger and seemingly stronger man. I mean, do you think Cannoneer's ceiling is number one contender, champion? Um, do you really think he can break through and challenge the likes of what we're going to see this weekend? I don't know if I see that right now. I, I, I would like to see Cannoneer in another fight or two um, to really make a more educated decision on that. Um what I have seen is a more professional Cannoneer, uh, a more mature and technical Jared Cannoneer. He's getting way more comfortable in the octagon. There's no doubt about that. 185 pounds is the division for him. Um, and just his power alone makes him a threat against either of those guys. He lands a big shot and he'll knock out anybody in that division. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, but as far as how deep his skills go. I want to see him in a little bit more of a challenging fight yeah. uh, at this point. So Jack Hermanson was still a little bit of a wild card, uh, even after beating Jacare. Uh, but I, I want to see him against maybe a uh, Yo Romero, a Kelvin Gastelum, one of those guys. He gets by one of those guys, then absolutely we're looking at a right. guy uh, who, who could be a, a belt holder. He's sort of an interesting case, right? Truly growing up inside the UFC, despite the fact that he's closer to 40 than 30 for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy who really not a lifelong martial artist by any stretch, right? A guy who committed to this and made a lot of good decisions and learned from some UFC losses. It's not as though he has this shiny UFC record candidate here, uh, but just feel good for a guy who just went all in. And, yes. you know, just to be able to take these bonus checks home to your wife, who at some point had to question the career decision. You know, it's just amazing that a guy would leave it all behind, go all in on this and to be reaping the benefits. And uh, we'll see, man. All right, Whitaker Adesanya, Aya Quinta Hooker. You can see it all on pay-per-view. Looks like the prelims are going to be live on ESPN2, Fight Pass before that. Uh, and that is going to do it for this week. Don't forget, you can also watch the show now every week live on YouTube. Subscribe to the Anime Morning Podcast channel at your convenience. We appreciate that. Thank you to Ray Longo, Ian Parker, Joe Osborne, and our producer, TJ DeSantis. We'll see how it goes. Arguably the most anticipated fight of 2019. Can't wait to see it live, and we'll be right back to talk with all of you about it next Monday. Until then, for Ken Paul, I'm John Anik. Thank you, and have a great week. Enjoy 243. Until later. The John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast is a TJ DeSantis production. It's content.